There must have been thirty levels above ground, and twenty more below. A solid block of metal walls and metal floors and metal and glass and force machines. The only light was the blue-green glow of the va mercury vapor arcs. The light of mercury vapor is rich in high-energy quanta, which stimulate the alkali metal atoms to photoelectronic activity. Or perhaps that is beyond the science of your day. I have forgotten. But they had used that light because many of their worker machines needed light. The machines were marvelous. For five hours I wandered through the vast power plant on the very lowest level watching them. And because there was motion, and that pseudo-mechanical life, I felt less alone. The generators I saw were development of the release I had discovered when, the release of the energy of matter, I mean, and I knew when I saw that for what countless ages they could continue. The entire lower block of the city was given over to the machines, thousands, but most of them seemed idle or, at most, running under light load. I recognized a telephone apparatus and not a single signal came through. There was no life in the city. Yet when I pressed a little stud beside the screen on one side of the room, the machine began working instantly. It was ready. Only no one needed it any more. The men knew how to die and be dead, but the machines didn't. Finally I went up to the top of the city, the upper level. It was a paradise. There were shrubs and trees and parks glowing in the soft light that they had learned to make in the very air. They had learned it five million years or more before. Two million years ago they forgot. But the machines didn't. And they were still making it. It hung in the air, soft, silvery light, slightly rosy, and the gardens were shadowy with it. There were no machines here now, but I knew that in daylight they must come out and work on those gardens, keeping them a paradise for masters who had died and stopped moving, as they could not. In the desert outside the city it had been cool and very dry. Here the air was soft, warm and sweet with the scent of blooms that men had spent several hundreds of thousands of years perfecting. Then somewhere music began. It began in the air and spread softly through it. The moon was just setting now, and as it set, the rosy sil silver glow waned, and the music grew stronger. It came from everywhere and from nowhere. It was within me. I do not know how they did it, and I do not know how such music could be written. Savages make music too simple to be beautiful, but it is stirring. Semi-savages write music beautifully simple and simply beautiful. Your Negro music was your best. They knew music when they heard it and sang it as they felt it. Semi-civilized peoples write great music. They are proud of their music and make sure it is known for great music. They make it so great it is top-heavy. I had always thought our music good, but that which came through the air was the song of triumph, sung by a mature race, the race of man in its full triumph. It was man singing his triumph in majestic sound that swept me up. It showed me what lay before me. It carried me on. And it died in the air as I looked at the deserted city. The machines should have forgotten that song. Their masters had, long ago, I came to what must have been one of their homes. It was a dimly seen doorway in the dusky light, but as I stepped up to it, the lights, which had not functioned in three hundred thousand years, illuminated it for me with a green-white glow like a firefly, and I stepped into the room beyond. Instantly something happened to the air in the doorway behind me. It was as opaque as milk. The room in which I stood was a room of metal and stone. The stone was some jet-black substance with the finish of velvet, and the metals were silver and gold. There was a rug on the floor, a rug of just such material as I am wearing now, but thicker and softer. There were divans about the room, low and covered with these soft metallic materials. They were black and gold and silver, too. I had never seen anything like that. I never shall again, I suppose, and my language and yours were not made to describe it. The builders of that city had right and reason to sing that song of sweeping triumph, triumph that swept over them, over the nine planets, 
and the fifteen habitable moons.